Hi, I'm Brian Wicklund. I'm lead counsel at Garfinkel Schwartz. Just thought I'd uh, take a break from my preparation and explain what a mediation is under the Defense Base Act. I'm here to mediation with a client of mine who is a former Navy SEAL, and it just occurred to me that um, he was injured as a civilian contractor after he um, was honorably discharged from the military. But I was just thinking, he, he's not allowed to be able to, he, he, he won't be able to utilize his skills that he learned in the upcoming um, tragedies and conflicts that are going to arise here in the near future. But we will need people like him um, in the following areas because the conflicts are starting to become severe. Hi, we're here at a mediation today. Uh, we're in Orlando, Florida, near the airport. Um, the attorney from the other side is coming from San Francisco. And we have an annuity broker here today from St. Pete, Florida. And the mediator is actually lives in Jacksonville. He's a retired district director of the Department of Labor. So I'm here with James, my client, and we're walking in to see where we have to go to our mediation. Looks like they're ready for us here today. Um, and we have two rooms here. We're going to the boardroom, and there's another room for the opposing counsel. And what happens is the mediator goes from room to room back and forth for the next uh, five hours or so and to see if we can come up to a resolution where our figures and their figures kind of mesh and meet and we're going to be close to something and hopefully get this case resolved instead of going to a judge in the future. And we have all day, so we'll see if it works. Um, now we're going to head over to our room. Everyone will be in the same room at the beginning and the mediator will explain that this is all completely confidential. It's non-binding. It's both parties amicably want to try to resolve the case. So there's not going to be any arguments and advocacy here and screaming and jumping around. It's more of a cordial atmosphere to see if we can get something resolved for a lump sum for James to you know, enjoy his life and move on and get away from the insurance company forever. So this is what we're doing. We're going to go to our room now. <clears throat> See, this works out great because I already see Mr. Lee, he's here nice and early, the mediator, ready for us. And so that works out great. And so this is our room, and this is how this is where the mediation starts. And then after that's over, the insurance company lawyer is going to go into another room across the hall. We won't see him for the rest of the day. And the mediator will go back and forth and give information on each side as to why we're too high and why they're too low. That's what he does. He he beats us up on this room, he beats them up on in that room to try to get us to meet in the middle. So this, we can come into the room and see how it works. And so we have an annuities broker here. And so we'll probably be cooped up in here for the next five or six hours. And hopefully by the time we leave, um, we, might not, we not, might not be totally satisfied. We might be sad, but we might get this case resolved. And then a week from now, we'll all be happy. So that's what works. If, if both sides are very angry about the situation, but it's resolved, that's a good thing. That means they think they paid too much, and we think we got too little. And that's, that's a successful mediation right there. Um, <laughs> the reason Mr. Keating is here is because part of the, part of the lump sum um, for James's benefit is to get an annuity type situation going so that he get, he's guaranteed money pretty much for the rest of his life or for the next 25 years in terms of a monthly stipend that he knows he'll get regardless of what ever happens. No one can ever take that away from him. If he hit the lottery and won $100 million tomorrow, it doesn't make any difference. He still gets his annuity every month for 25 years and he can also use that money and put a beneficiary on it so that if something happens to him, the beneficiary will, will reap the benefits of that annuity. So it's just something that's guaranteed as opposed to just a lump sum in his pocket that he can do whatever he wants with. So we're going to figure out today if we get to a, a, a number that's, that's, that's satisfactory, that's significant, then we're going to figure out that the fun stuff starts after that. that then we figure out how much money should be annuitized for, for guaranteed situations and how much money in a lump sum um, that he would, he would need to get on with his life, to buy a house for cash, to do whatever he needs to do to get himself ready for his future without the insurance company involved, which is a great thing. And so again, Brian from Garfinkel Schwartz, hope you learned something out of this situation. And if you have any questions, just call anytime or look, look me up on the website. Thanks. Take care.